I take things personally. I'm in the habit of interpreting others' behavior as criticizing, dismissing, putting me down, thinking that I'm not good enough. Me, me, me. Everything's about me. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's really good to see this. Because from here, I can really look at the way that I interact with others and with the world is totally through my own lens of assumptions and stories. This position of being at the center of the universe. And it's only through this acknowledgement that I can work on it. And also seeing that there are so many other things I can take personally. Like, what if I took the kindness of others personally and saw the kindness of someone cooking lunch, someone filling the water pitchers, someone maintaining our um, electrical systems, the air conditioning systems? What if I saw that as, like, took that personally and could really see others through the eyes of kindness instead of um, thinking that all of their behavior is kind of a, a negative reflection of myself. So this kind of switching of lenses um, was really inspired by the retreat this last week. Um, as Venerable Sangye Kadro was describing the two methods to develop bodhicitta, and that they really start with equanimity and evening out my bias of how I am uh, approaching others and how I see others. And looking at the impermanence of relationships, that everyone in my life started out as a stranger and goes really through different phases of friend and enemy and friend and enemy, and it can change on a daily basis. And even people who I feel like I know well, I can also see them as strangers and feel that there's a lack of connection sometimes. And so these relationships are quite impermanent. So maybe not so logical to base my uh, interactions just on kind of the stories that I'm telling myself um, about people's uh, motivations and intentions. And we have these important things in common that we all want to be free from suffering and we all want happiness. And we are all overwhelmed by afflictions and karma that is getting in our way of this happiness that we're seeking. Um, previously, I was kind of reluctant to engage in this meditation because I didn't like the idea of putting people into this box of like friend, enemy, or stranger. Uh, I didn't think it really captured the complexity of relationships. But the retreat this past week really helped me see that that's not really the point of the meditation, and it's really to observe um, uh, where I have attachment, where I have aversion, and where I have indifference. And to be able to look at these mental states um, and just these labels of friend, enemy, and stranger are tools to help me do that. It's not boxes with solid, fixed edges. And so in the equanimity meditation, I can really see more clearly how I have assumptions of others based on our interactions in the past. And it's been a pretty recent past, uh, just this life, the past you know 40-something years. And really, we've been circling together in cyclic existence for much longer than that, and will continue to cycle together. And so it, it seems pretty superficial that I'm basing all my behavior just on this kind of short-term relationship and uh, engagement. And in that, though, I really have expectations. Uh, I expect um, people who I have a history of being friendly with to be friendly and people who are, I consider challenging to be challenging. And then I you know, go on with my thoughts and words and actions in response to that. And Venable Kadro posed this question of whether I want to continue in this way, whether I want to be warm towards people who I feel a connection with, kind of hold back and be more cool towards those I don't, 
and to kind of have a indifferent attitude towards um, people I have stranger who I who are strangers right now in this life. And I would like to not continue like this. I would really like to work on evening that out and creating a more um, warm-hearted feeling towards all other beings. Because when I am stuck in my own stories, I'm really affirming these false narratives in my mind. I am kind of solidifying the challenging person as you are always going to be challenging and this next interaction is going to be challenging and uh, uh, uh. And the same with the friendly person. I'm really exaggerating their good qualities. Um, you are amazing. You are the best. You are never going to disappoint me. And, you know, things change. <laughs> We're all changing all the time. I mean, it's a pleasant change when the challenging person doesn't act in this stereotypical way I'm imagining them to. And it's a really unpleasant change when the person I consider a friend is maybe having a bad day and um, not being friendly. <laughs> at least in my judgment of what friendly is. And it, it kind of goes along with this saying that I've heard a lot of like, you're gonna get out of things what you put into it. Um, like when I take a class or something, it's often like, oh, you'll get out of this class or you'll get out of this project, like what you're willing to put into it. And so it, it kind of seems similar, like I'm gonna get out of this relationship what I put into it. Like if I am putting in um, judgment and arrogance and um, kind of writing off others, that's what I'm going to get out of the relationship. Where if I can put some um, warmth and uh, understanding and um, seeing our commonalities, then I think that's what I will get out of it in return. And so some different ways that I've been working to cultivate warmth, um, especially towards those who I have aversion towards, are to remember that we are all um, overwhelmed by karma and afflictions and all want happiness. And this is the same whether it's someone I consider a friend and it's easier for me to see their good qualities, or whether it's someone I see as more challenging and kind of have that inappropriate attention towards things that I don't like as much but that each of us have suffering and discontent and dis-ease and pain. And so why be friendly towards some and unfriendly towards others when we really have this shared experience? And as uh, Venerable Chodron has um, taught us in some of her stories, I've really been considering like, who's kinder? And people that are nice to me? Or people that push my buttons? Really, it's the people who push my buttons. Because they give me an opportunity to see, see my afflictions, to you know, help create the causes, to stimulate them in my mind. And then I get to work on it. And as Geshe-la has um, been teaching uh, in multiple teachings, he really shares that working with our afflictions is Dharma practice. And so each time um, I have an engagement that's um, unpleasant or that I have anger arise or frustration, irritation, all of these um, different manifestations of anger, this person is giving me an amazing opportunity to practice. They are also helping me to purify negative karma I've created in the past that's um, resulted in this current um, uncomfortable situation. And so I can really um, take that to heart and take that kind of kindness personally, that here is another sentient being who I totally depend on to help me develop my good qualities because if everyone were friendly, there was no way I could develop fortitude for when something really difficult happens. But um, getting the chance to practice um, staying calm and staying balanced um, as I interact with others and we have differences and ideas and ways of doing things, um, this is really what is going to help me um, in the long run to um, create the causes for to become a bodhisattva and Buddhahood 
and to help me be of the most benefit to others, uh, both in that moment by staying more balanced and um, in the long term, hopefully to be able to, to share um, the benefits of ethics and fortitude and um, inspire others to also develop their good qualities. Um, there's a, a practice that I, I really love that we do here each day that um, kind of just always brings me back to this equanimity of when we bow to each other in the mornings and the evenings in the meditation hall and I get to make eye contact with each person and in my mind, you know, be like, oh, good morning, Buddha to be, good morning, Buddha to be. And we're all equal in that way, each having the same potential. And so it, it just comes back again. So why am I cool towards others and warm, you know, towards other people? It is not so logical. Uh, and I can say these words. And in my meditation, you know, cultivate a, a more of a warm-hearted feeling. Uh, and I see in daily life that I still have a long ways to go to really kind of move this uh, titanic of a mind to putting this into practice. Um, but the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas started out as ordinary beings, just like us. And they, you know, step by step worked with their minds and cultivated equanimity as the foundation for their bodhicitta. And so in the same way, just step by step or itty bitty baby step by itty bitty baby step, it's still going in this good direction towards um, accomplishing uh, what we want to bring happiness uh, to ourselves and really be able to extend that and uh, teach each and every being how to cultivate good qualities that lead to their own happiness too. <laughs>